next section we're looking at God's judgment of nations um, and to, in today's discussion we want to have a look at the church's response to the judgment of God when it takes place in the nations in which they reside. How should the church in fact uh, react? We've said thus far that um, when God pronounces judgment on a nation that that settles the matter, judgment will fall, there's nothing that really can be done about that. Um, but nevertheless, um, what we will look at today is the fact that there is an intervention that the, the church can make, it's not what we, we think it is, but we'll discuss that. And we also need to learn to differentiate between two aspects of God's judgment. The one is um, purely the judgment of God in a nation. We've discussed the three judgment that, judgments that God uses, war, famine, and pestilence. Uh, but there is another aspect of God's judgment, judgment which we need to recognize and which we will go into in more detail in the next um, discussion. But in this one, we just need to highlight that there are these two differences. The one is the judgment of God. The other one is... Uh, God's destruction of a nation and we will see from scripture that the reaction of the church in both instances uh, should be different because God expects it to be different and so we get to the point where we want to discuss today the discussion uh, around the fact is what is the church's response to the judgment of God on a nation when God uh, says that the, the nation is now going to be judged. And a passage of scripture we can open up with today around this discussion is in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12 to 14. The scripture says, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now this particular passage of scripture is not misleading, but is used inappropriately by the church. Why do I say that? Well, this is an Old Testament um, passage of Scripture. Obviously, God is speaking to Solomon, and he's telling Solomon, if the, the, the people who are called by my name will meet these requirements, well, then I will, uh, he says, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. So God is saying to Solomon, Solomon, when Israel gets out of hand and you know sins against me, and I thus proclaim judgment on the nation of Israel, if they will repent, and if they will seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will he hear from heaven and I will um, forgive their sin, I will heal their land. And so the church takes that passage of scripture. What happens is that when a a nation starts to incur the judgment of God. Obviously, things start to get very uncomfortable in the nation. And the church experience, experiences that same um, uncomfortableness because, you know, things are starting to go wrong. And so, quite sadly, what happens, it's it, only at that time that a lot of the church actually then begins to wake up and begins to pray and to seek the Lord. Lord, you know, judgment, why, why is this happening? We need to uh, reverse this and they run to this passage of scripture and they quote this passage of scripture and on the surface it looks quite legit I mean you know God says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and so the church says well we're the people of God we're called by his name and so if we humble ourselves and pray well God's going to uh, forgive the sin our sin and he's going to heal the land and so they begin to pray earnestly for God to do just that. The problem with that interpretation is is that God was addressing the nation of Israel at the time when he made this statement. He wasn't talking about the church at all. 
Now, why do we, what can we say that confidently? Well, quite clearly, when God judges a nation, he expects the nation to repent of their wickedness, and if they do, well, then he withholds or withdraws his judgment. So Israel was a nation at the time. And so when God spoke to Solomon, he was talking about the nation of Israel. When he was saying, um, um, my, uh, my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray. He was specifically referring to the nation of Israel. He was saying, when I judge Israel because of their wickedness, if they would turn as a nation and repent, uh, then I will uh, forgive their sin and heal their land. Now we come across to the to the, the, the church age. The, the Christians living inside the nations are the people of God, but nevertheless they are the nations that they are living in are not the uh, people who are called by his name. And, and so when God decides to judge a nation, he's judging the wickedness of the nation. It's got nothing to do with the church. And so the church needs to recognize that we are sojourners in the nations in which we reside. In other words, we, the Bible talks about the fact we're ambassadors. We're from another uh, environment. We're, we're from heaven and we're in the earth and we are ambassadors of Christ. And so, you know, you can take the analogy quite far down the line uh, from the point of view of an ambassador in a nation and, they, and the, the nation that the ambassador is from begins to invade the nation where the ambassador resides. And now the ambassador is trying to get the nation that he represents to stop invading the nation. Well, that's a bit stupid anyway. But the point is, is that the church has no place here. God is judging the nation. And so it is only the nation the wickedness, when a nation uh, um, practices wickedness, it is only them who can reverse the judgment of God, not the church. And the church can't repent on behalf of the nation. It's, it's absolute foolishness for them to try and do so. And so their prayers go unheard, unanswered, obviously, because they're praying outside of the will of God and confusion reigns in the church. Lord, we've humbled ourselves, we've prayed, and we're still experiencing your judgment. Well, yes, that's true, because the reason you're experiencing the, the judgment of God is because you're residing in the nation that God is judging. And it is only that nation, nation's repentance that can change the judgment of God. The church has got nothing to do with it. The church can pray to the Lord, Lord, can you please uh, soften the hearts of those in the nation so that they will re repent and re uh uh, return to the Lord and repent of the wickedness so that he can withstand, withhold his judgment. But the church can't repent on behalf of the nation. They're not part of the nation. They're outside of it. Um, they're experiencing the same judgment. Remember we said God always gives the church the heads up for the judgment that is about to fall so that the church can prepare themselves to go through the judgment. But um, the church can't repent on behalf of the nation. So, you know, that passage of Scripture is really taken out of context and uh, creates a lot of confusion in the church because, you know, Christians tend to think, well, you know, as long as we get our act together, God's going to withhold his judgment on, nation, on the nation. No, not at all. The judgment is coming on the nation because God is judging the nation and he expects the nation to repent. Now, quite often what happens, the nation doesn't repent. You know, you see judgment coming on a nation and everybody in the, in the nation continues in their wickedness. And so the, the judgment continues. Um, there are instances, however, where nations do repent. Um, think about Jonah for argument's sake. Jonah goes into the, uh, the uh, city of Nineveh and he proclaims in 40 days, God's going to judge the city. Now, what happens in that, in that instance is that the city... As a, as a whole, repents before God. And they fast and they pray and they cry out to God for, uh, uh, for forgiveness. God hears and God withholds his judgment. Now, Jonah wasn't praying for them that they would repent. Jonah was actually quite 
um, angry with God when God withheld his judgment. He said, look at this. I knew you were going to do this. You send me here to proclaim your judgment. And they repent, and now you withhold your judgment. And, and, and you know, Jonah got quite <laughs> angry about the issue. So it wasn't a case of that Jonah was interceding on behalf of Nineveh. God withhold your judgment. Not at all. Jonah was actually quite keen to see the judgment of God taking place on the city. He went up on, on, the, on a mountainside to watch, and obviously nothing happened. Um, and so it is possible for a, a nation when they are forewarned of the judgment of God to, that is going to take place for them to repent and then God relents and he withholds his judgment. Or even while a nation is going through judgment um, for a nation to repent and then God will reverse his judgment. But the point that we need to understand from the church, because in, in today's section we want you to talk about the church's response to God's judgment in a nation. The only response that the church can have is first obviously take care of themselves, make sure that they are ready for the judgment that is about to fall, um, or and, and also they can pray for the, the nation on which the judgment is, of God is about to fall, that they will repent. Um, but outside of that, the church is really um, unable to do anything about it. Another passage of scripture we can have a look at that highlights this particular truth to us is in Numbers 21, uh, verse 5 to 8. Scripture says, And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. They're complaining about the manna that God has given them. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. We have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he, may, that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. And so what we see here is Moses reacting differently to other occasions. And why do I say that? Well, as we get into the next discussion, where God is going to destroy a nation, um, the, the saints are, are required to react differently. And Moses is giving us uh, an example of how we're supposed to do it. On this particular occasion, just to quite often we read in the scripture where God was about to destroy Israel. What does Moses do? He stands in the gap. He, he intercedes on behalf of the nation um, and God withholds his, his judgment of destruction. Now, very often when God does that, um, Israel doesn't repent at all. Israel doesn't even know that God's about to judge them. One occasion where God says, get out of the way, Moses, I'm going to destroy this bunch and we'll make a whole new nation out of you, much stronger than this lot. I'm paraphrasing, obviously, and, God, and Moses says, no, 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 God, you can't do that because of your name, your reputation, etc., etc. So Israel's wicked. Israel's about to be judged, about to be destroyed. Moses stands in the gap on their behalf. They don't even know that they're about to incur the judgment of God. That's a different scenario. We'll get to that in more detail in the next discussion. But on this occasion here, what does Moses do? He does absolutely nothing because he recognizes that this judgment that God is bringing upon the nation is not going to destroy the nation. There's a, you know, there are a lot of people going to die, but it's not going to wipe out the nation. And so Moses backs off. He does nothing. He doesn't intercede before God. He doesn't say, God, oh, you've got to do something about this. No, he lets God's judgment to continue on the nation. What happens? The nation recognizes their wickedness. And the nation comes to Moses and repents and says, we've done wrong, we've sinned against God, now won't you pray for us? At that point, Moses then intercedes to God. God hears Moses and God withdraws it. Well, he gives a remedy for the judgment that has been pronounced on the nation. But the point that I want to really bring across here is that Moses stays out of it. 
when God brings judgment upon the nation, that he's not going to destroy the nation, Moses recognizes this is God's judgment on them. It's up to them to deal with the issue. They, in this instance, we see Israel woke up, realized, okay, we messed up, we've sinned, and we repented, and we're asking God to forgive us. Moses prays, and God kind of forgives them. He gives them the remedy to, to uh, get out of the judgment. And so it, it, when judgment falls on a nation, um, what we need to recognize is a difference between the judgment of God and the destruction of a nation, the destruction of God. And the church is meant to react differently in those two instances, as Moses did in this instance, and as we will see in the next discussion, how Moses reacted when God was about to destroy a nation. There are two different aspects. God expects the church to act differently on both occasions. But getting back to that uh, original scripture, the one that the church loves to quote when they sense the judgment of God coming on the nation, and they by and large pray that because you know they start to experience the, the harshness of, the, of God's judgment. They don't like it. And so they're trying to get God to reverse his judgment. And it's you know, completely unscriptural to do what the church quite often does. Lord, we're, we're your people. We're humbling ourselves. We're praying. Now you need to forgive us and heal our land. God says, hey, guys, I, my, my beef is not with you. My beef is with the, the land, the, the, the people, the unbelievers around you. I'm sorting them out. And unless they can't turn and repent to me, uh-uh. Judgment's not going to be lifted. They're going to go through it. And uh, so that's just to confirm the point that the church, when uh, the church's response to God's judgment of a nation is different to the church's response to God's destruction of a nation.